Imagine if animals could talk. That could be both exciting and scary for the human race. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Looks like the human race is... Hey everybody, welcome to episode 42 Between a Rock and a Hard Place. I'm your host J Rock the Game Rocker, and that was my friend Billy the Macaw from the Reptile Store. He's made an appearance in my video before, uh, so yeah, he is really cool, Macaw. I love seeing him when I when I go into the store every couple weeks, so got a little video, and you know, uh, I he's he's not always the best to work with. Sometimes he doesn't do everything that you ask him to do. Uh, Here's an example of that. What about dancing? You want to dance? Dance? Dan no? What do you want to do? You want to? Oh, you want to poop? He pooped on camera and made a funny sound. Let's listen to that sound. Let's isolate that sound. And once more in slow motion. You wanna, oh, you want to poop? Oh, you pooped. Oh, is that the poopy dance? Poopy dance. Poopy dance. Yeah, look at those moves. Yeah, poop is funny, kids. Hey, first off, I want to start this episode with a thank you to uh, a couple cool rockin' dudes from here in Ontario, Jay Bartlett and Rob McCallum of the NES Club Nintendo Quest movie. I got my... Kickstarter package here, my reward package for supporting them, supporting their film on Kickstarter. I got my signed DVD, no, not not DVD, Blu-ray. This is the, this is actually the only Blu-ray I own, guys. Seriously, the only Blu-ray I own. I don't even like buy movies anymore. But uh, I believe in what you're doing with this Nintendo Quest thing, and I'm not going to spoil myself yet. Came with a cool 8-bit soundtrack on tape cassette tape, and I actually have a player that I'm going to bust out to uh, to use that with. And then I got the NES Club replica cart. This is an empty cart, and actually it didn't come with any screws. Were there supposed to be screws, guys? I don't know. But uh, just a replica cart with the label on there with J running along. And there was a variant of the label, and this is not the rare variant. <sighs> Bummer. I already had. I already have this one here. Same one. And this is signed by the guys and says to J Rock, 8 Bit Army. Got that signed by those guys at Glass Waterloo Game Swap. And this wicked NES replica style box for the cart. So yeah, thanks a lot, Jay and Rob of Nintendo Quest. If you had never heard of them, guys. Go check them out. All their info is going to be below. And they also have a podcast that they do with their friend, Glenn Stanway, called GamerCast. And it's weekly, every Thursday. And it's just awesome. I love that show. And they actually have a Patreon. Patreon.com slash GamerCast. I've heard Rob say that enough. Uh, go check those guys out. Give them a listen. Give them some support. And even for just a buck a month, uh, you can get some extra content and stuff. So thank you guys from Nintendo Quest. They have a screening uh, in London, September 25th, of the film, and I am saving the movie experience for that day, so I am not going to be watching this quite yet. This will remain sealed for now, but yeah, if you're in Ontario, go check out. Uh, there's still tickets available, I, I believe, at NintendoQuest.com, and you can go check these guys out with their movie. So yeah, thanks guys, you rock, on with the show. Uh, while I'm plugging things, the Waterloo video game swap meet's coming up, and that is next week. I actually just did a video uh, sort of announcing and advertising the swap, so that's that's this video right here playing right next to me. Ooh, effects! Uh, click on that if you want to hear more about it. Uh, but it's next week, next Sunday. And this week, let's talk about stuff that's been going on with me. So this week, 
I, uh, oh, first off, I'm thirsty. Got myself a Pop Shop Pop. This, if you are from Ontario, you know what this is about. This is delicious pop. Uh, yeah. This is the best. Oh, it's the best you can get. So this week, my friend John visited from out west. He moved out west quite a while ago, and he sort of, it was a surprise. I got a phone call, uh, and he was like, hey, I'll give you a ride to work. So my buddy John gave me a ride to work, and it's good to see him for that brief little, he was here for a day, so good to see him. Uh, and then also this week, Saturday, we did the live Retro Fandango podcast, and I believe that's called a live cast when you do that. And that was really fun. I moderated the chat, did some trivia questions with people, and uh, it was just great to see so many people tuning in and interacting with the show. I hope to do that again. It was a blast, and I always love fandangoing, folks. So I'm sure that live episode, unedited, is going to be released at some point. I don't know if it'll be in a video format or audio format. Most likely audio format. Obviously, it's a podcast. But uh, yeah, keep your eye out for that, Retro Fandango Live. That was a blast. Now let's move on to another segment, The Rockin' Spotlight. Now, The Rockin' Spotlight is where I show you a local band that you might not normally get a chance to listen to. So this week, I actually went down to my jam space and I talked with my buddy Justin from Dowdy Days, who I share a room with. Uh, we talked about his band, Dowdy Days. So let's go to that interview now. J-Rock here. I'm down on my jam space with my friend Justin that I share the space with. He's in the band called Dowdy Days. Hey Justin, good to see you, buddy. So you're the guitarist and singer-songwriter of Dowdy Days. Uh, how long have you been writing songs and you know, um, doing that? Well, I got into music, I think, in my, my last year of high school. I didn't know how to play guitar or anything at the time, but I just started jamming with guys like singing lyrics or whatever, or covers, whatever I need to that. Covers are a good way to start. Yeah, for sure. Just trying That's to... how I started playing, and yeah, you and learn always... the styles of different people. So. What were your influences most of all, like, in your growth as a songwriter? Um, well, at the time when I, I don't know, when I was a kid, I used to listen to a lot of different stuff, like pop music. I was into Michael Jackson as a kid growing up. Thriller and, then, and stuff uh, like that. Yeah, and then, yeah. you know, I, always, I was always into the classic rock, you know. Hey, you're talking classics. my language. Yeah, like, you know, I, you, you know. know, the Beatles, the Doors. Oh, yeah. Zeppelin and, uh. Way like, down inside. That's right, that's right. <laughs> we should jam some. That's going to sound that's awesome right. in this video. Hey. <laughs> yeah, <that's real. laughs> oh, okay. Nice. So, how, how many members are in the band Dowdy Days? Well, we've... I know, but these people don't know. All my, I call them, people that watch, I call them Pebbles. They're my fans okay. or Pebbles. I'm okay, J-Rock. fellow Pebbles. Now we're a four-piece. We've actually had three guitars and we're five-piece not long ago. Uh, so you, now you're a four-piece. Now piece. we're a four-piece, yeah. That's Kyle on guitar. Kyle Patterson on Kyle, guitar. Kyle Patterson. Cody Morris on bass. Brian oh. Alvey on drums. And yours truly, Justin Kyle on the guitar. And singing. And singing. Yeah, and so, uh, like, obviously we've been listening to some tunes in the background here, people, and if you like them, that's because this guy made them. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, what, what genre would you say... Dowdy Days fits into? Uh, right? I would say, you know, like indie grunge rock uh, garage. Throughout the band, we'd be, we're all influenced by, you know, like Nirvana and Queens of the Stone Age. Yeah, I knew the Nirvana part. Yeah. You're very, you're, like, you're very... For sure, yeah. I, I know you play a lot of the, the covers, too, so... We do, yeah. Um, we all kind of know 
lot of Nirvana tunes and we just jam around sometimes. But. I mean, Elliot's, Elliot Smith is a huge influence for me as well. Oh, yeah? Like, I, songwriting wise, and uh, for sure, growing up and listening to Elliot Smith a lot. Cool, cool. So, do you have any uh, upcoming shows? I know you got an upcoming show, so let's talk about that. Yeah, we got a show September 17th. And it's this will be uploaded, Spotify. this video, on the 12th, or 14th. Okay, yeah. 14th. Yeah. So this is before that show. If so you're watching this and you're in Hamilton... It's the 14th. So go check... Yeah. If you're in Hamilton, local, go check out Dowdy Days at... In three days. At the Doors Pub on Hess Street. So, like, for people that are interested in hearing more of Dowdy Days material, where can they find your recordings online? Like, that I can link up for them in the description. Um... SoundCloud. YouTube, yeah, you got a SoundCloud? Twitter, and a YouTube? Yeah. We got a DowdyDays.com. Oh, yeah? We got a website. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, that all that will be in the, the links in the description. Yeah, for sure. So, people, Absolutely. you can find the stuff. Of course, if you like the music that you've been hearing, it's by these guys. Thanks for uh, coming by for this uh, little interview, telling people about your band, Dowdy Days, and, you know, where people can find you. And, uh, yeah, so, this has been J-Rock and Justin dowdy days so yeah dowdy days awesome dudes good times always listen to those guys uh i can't help but keep the beat with my foot and just you know rock out so uh if you are in hamilton or nearby and you want to see these guys they have a show coming up september 17th at the casbah that's a thursday night i will not be in attendance i'll be working uh, but yeah, if you're nearby and you want to check these guys out, go to the Casbah September 17th and check out Dowdy Days. Now on to the next segment, Game Pickups. Uh, so I went to one of my favorite stores, Cheapies. Uh, you might remember is a store that almost got burned down by that crazy pyromaniac that I thwarted. Uh, they had a 50% off all their video games sale, one day only. And the bad thing was, is I was on my way to work and I didn't have a lot of time to go through stuff or else I could have spent a little bit more money and got some stuff, maybe even some, I was thinking about getting some trade stuff for uh, the upcoming Waterloo Game Swap, uh, get some trade value. Uh, but I grabbed some stuff I needed and one thing kind of for trade and I got this whole stock here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Fifteen games for like forty bucks. That works out to almost three bucks a game. So yeah, that wasn't too bad. Let's go through them. See what I got. I got Star Wars: The New Droid Army for Game Boy Advance. Love me collecting them Star Wars games. Got Rampart for Game Boy Color. And I had heard something about on. Uh, on Pat the NES Punk's podcast, completely unnecessary podcast, that some, they were talking about some dude ran up the price of Rampart. Uh, I'm not sure if it was this version or another Game Boy version, but uh, I was like, hey, for a couple bucks, I'll grab it. Now I got some NES games that I needed, and uh, these are a lot of sports games that I kind of passed over earlier on, but uh, when, when NES games are two, three bucks, you buy them, so these are ones I needed. Got Major League Baseball, Captain Skyhawk, Super Mario Bros. Duck Hunt, and World Class Track Me, California Games, and Hoops. A lot of filler, but uh, when you're trying to build a huge, I want to build a big library of NES, I'm not going to say I'm going for the complete collection because some of those games are just crazy priced, but uh, I'm trying to get as many as I can, so anyone out there who, you know, local people want to get rid of some NES games, you know who to come to. And then I got, uh, for Xbox 360, heard the Cartridge Bro P1 talking about this, Lost Odyssey on Xbox 360, got it for two bucks. Awesome. Love when that happens. And I hear it's a really good RPG, so maybe I'll play that when I'm retired or uh, infirm in, in old folks home. And then a pile of PS2 games. Love collecting for the PS2. So easy to do these days. Got Aqua Teen Hunger Force. 
Zombie Ninja Pro Am, a game I never heard of, but Aqua Teen Hunger Force is, has a cult following, so I decided to uh, grab it. Got Shadow of the Colossus, which is actually a replacement for my greatest hits copy that I'm going to be trading for some value at Waterloo GameSwap, hopefully. The Godfather game, never actually played that, always kind of wanted to. From Russia with Love, never played that either. And uh, Hitman games, Hitman 2, Hitman Contracts, and Hitman Blood Money. I don't even know how many there are. But yeah, that's a bunch of games I got for 40 bucks, so that was pretty sweet. So let's move on to what I'm playing. And uh, let's not just talk about what I'm playing. Let's actually go there and do it. Let's go to the couch. There, we just did our magic trick. We're on the couch here. And uh, let's see. Let's check out my driver details. As you can see, I have 36% of the game complete. So let's let's chip away at that, get that number higher. Uh, they're doing a lot of stuff in the USA and not too much in the Far East. As you can see, I don't have very many medals there, so... Let's go to the Far East, see what I got here. Ooh, I like crash events. Let's do a crash event. Paradise Peril, let's do it. Last week you saw me uh, do a preview lap, which is me trying to beat a, a lap in under a certain time. So this time, let's, let's show off some of Burnout's best stuff in its crashes. That is what makes this game, is that it rewards you for causing carnage. I like how they show you how you need to take a route to get all this stuff here. Very important to watch those. Don't get too trigger happy with that X button. Alright, here we go. necessary for gold. Let's see if I did that in one go. You can speed this up if you'd like, but I like seeing a total how many cars I've totaled. Those explosions help you uh, move in directions you want to go to get those four times multipliers which puts you up to the gold medal status. And that is how you get a gold medal in the first try. Now, back to the show, kids. So yeah, that was the Cartridge Club Game of the Month, Burnout 3. Hopefully you've been playing along. Go to cartridgeclub.org. And uh, actually, next month's game for October, and for the next two months, I will be hosting co-hosting the Cartridge Club podcast with Player 2 in uh, his brother Player 1's absence. He is going to be away in, uh, overseas in Europe, so um, I will be in his place. He asked me to do that. Very honored to do that. And so I chose sort of the next month's game for October. That is Super Ghouls and Ghosts. It's one of my favorites. If you uh, watch some of my uh, Let's Play videos from a while back, I did this and beat it on my channel, so... Love this game, play it on professional mode, trying to do one life runs, love it. And then for the next month, for November, it is River City Ransom. I uh, ha have had this for a while and I've been wanting a reason to play this and I thought that it would be a good fit for the club. So when PE2 and I were banging off ideas of what games we wanted, I suggested River City Ransom because it's got RPG elements, uh, beat em up elements, you're welcome Ramvox. And, uh, you know, it's just it's a fun time. You can play with two people. It's got a password system. It's actually a pretty lengthy game, so I figured it wouldn't be too short. And, uh, yeah, River City Ransom. It's a bit pricey to get a uh, physical copy of, so I'm not sure if it's available on eShops and stuff. Should have looked into that before I started recording here, but, uh, yeah. If it is or not, here's a little info. What, what do you say, little game rocker? 
there you go, folks. Uh, so yeah. So now let's move on to Word of the Week! And the Word of the Week this week is colloquialism. Uh, collo colloquy? Colloquially? Collo no, no P1. Colloquialism. <laughs> There's a word. I don't know, I don't care. Yes, that one. Colloquialism. Colloquialism. Colloquialism is a word or phrase that is used in informal speech, and it's usually based on some sort of local or regional dialect. So it's uh, slang. It's a fancy word for slang uh, that's based on uh, geography. So one example that I, I thought of while I was filming here is I'm drinking Pop Shop Pop. Now, I understand that pop is a Canadian word to say what this is. In, in, in America, they call it soda or drink, I guess. They call it, they call it drink. But uh, yeah, they call it soda. And uh, yeah, th we call it pop here in Canada. But yeah, another, another Canadian example is Tim Hortons. I call it Tim's, Timmy's, Hortons. People got their nicknames for it, so that's a colloquialism, a Canadian colloquialism. So, P1, that is what you're going for there. You had it right, you had colloquially, uh, which is actually a word. Let's move on to the YouTube shout out of the week. And the YouTube shout out of the week this week is Ryan, Airzock World Champ. Uh, Ryan is a fellow Ontario dweller, and I've crossed paths with him several times at the Waterloo Game Swap and Con Bravo. Uh, look forward to seeing you next week, buddy. But uh, Ryan is a world record holder. He's in the Guinness Book of World Records for some of his games that he has high scores in. Airzonk being one of them. Uh, Super Bonk, Bonk's Adventure, The Guardian Legend, just to name a few. Uh, he does uh, Let's Plays on his channel, Ultimate Let's Plays, which uh, is where he does these high score things. And... Uh, uh, world records and speed runs and stuff so it's really interesting to see that sort of stuff to see such a skilled video game player uh, he also does reviews on his channel uh, as well as um, indifferent video game nerd uh, reviews which is an homage to the AVGN but he's indifferent uh, not so angry so yeah check out Ryan uh, he rocks and I look forward to seeing you next week at Waterloo Video Games swap me buddy so yeah, this has been a fun episode, guys. Action-packed, but we gotta cut this short because we're going long here, folks. And uh, it's like turning into a real, real show. Like, you could throw in some commercials and that'd be a full half hour, folks. But uh, yeah, we gotta round it out here with a question for the viewers. My question for you is, can you name a colloquialism that you use regularly? You tell me a colloquialism that you use. Colloquialism, colloquialism, colloquialism. Uh, yeah. So, this has been J-Rock, and you know what to do. Hey, this is Justin from Dowdy Days, and keep on rocking them games. Thanks for stopping by between a rock and a hard place, my little pebbles. Click the video at the top left to let me convince you to go to the Waterloo Video Game Swap Meet if you're in Southern Ontario. And don't forget to check out my YouTube shout-out of the week, Ryan Airzock, world champ. He's a legit Guinness world record holder. And also, don't forget to go check out my buddy Justin's band, Dowdy Days. They rock! And also, I failed to mention, welcome back the Nestromancer, who wasn't feeling too good last week, but he's back and at it again with another video. Death to all but metal! Did you want to restart? Yeah, for sure. I'm oh, gonna dude. tell her to stop fucking messaging me. Yeah, she, this is gonna this be is in the it. this is gonna be in the cut at the end, eh? No, no, I'm not. No, gonna that's that okay. In. I'm not gonna put that in. I just gotta. I won't get you in trouble. No, this is good. I might just take my phone and put it outside.
I'm not trying to give you a hard time. No, we're good. We're good. I hope we're good. We're All friends, right? right? Wow. Oh, 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 oh. Signed by those guys at Glass Waterloo Game Swap and this wicked NES replica style box for the cards. So yeah, thanks a lot Jay and Rob of Nintendo Quest. If you have never heard of them guys, go check them out. All their info is going to be below. And they also have a podcast that they do with their friend Glenn Stanway called GamerCast. And it's weekly every Thursday. And it's just awesome. I love that show. And they actually have a Patreon. Patreon.com slash GamerCast. I've heard Rob say that enough. Uh, go check those guys out. Just give them a listen. Give them some support. And even for just a buck a month, uh, you can get some extra content and stuff. So thank you guys from Nintendo Quest. They have a screening uh, in London. September 25th of the film and I am saving the movie experience for that day so I am not going to be watching this quite yet this will remain sealed for now but yeah if you're in Ontario go check out uh, there's still tickets available I, I believe at nintendoquest.com and you can go check these guys out with their movie so yeah thanks guys you rock on with the show uh, while I'm plugging things, the Waterloo Video Game Swap Meet's coming up, and that is next week. I actually just did a video uh, sort of announcing and advertising the swap, so that's, that's this video right here playing right next to me. Ooh, effects. Uh, click on that if you want to hear more about it. Imagine if animals could talk. That could be both exciting and scary for the human race. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> Looks like the human race is... Hey everybody, welcome to episode 42 Between a Rock and a Hard Place. I'm your host J-Rock the Game Rocker and that was my friend Billy the Macaw from the Reptile Store. He's made an appearance in my video before. Uh, so yeah, he is really cool, Macaw. I love seeing him when I, when I go into the store every couple weeks. So, got a little video and you know, uh, I, he's, he's not always the best to work with. Sometimes he doesn't do everything that you ask him to do. Uh, Here's an example of that. What about dancing? You want to dance? Dance? Dan no? What do you want to do? You want to oh, you want to poop. He pooped on camera and made a funny sound. Let's listen to that sound. Let's isolate that sound. And once more in slow motion. You wanna, oh, you want to poop? Oh, you poop! Uh, but it's next week, next Sunday. And this week, let's talk about stuff that's been going on with me. So this week, I, uh, oh, first off, I'm thirsty. Got myself a Pop Shop Pop. This, if you are from Ontario, you know what this is about. This is delicious pop. Uh, yeah. This is the best. Oh, it's the best you can get. So this week my friend John visited from out west, he moved out west quite a while ago and he sort of, it was a surprise, I got a phone call uh, and he was like, hey, I'll give you a ride to work. So my buddy John gave me a ride to work and it's good to see him for that brief little, he was here for a day, so good to see him. Uh, and then also this week, Saturday we did the live Retro Fandango podcast and I believe that's called a live cast when you do that. And that was really fun. I moderated the chat, did some trivia questions with people, and uh, it was just great to see so many people tuning in and interacting with the show. I hope to do that again. It was a blast, and I always love fandangoing, folks. So I'm sure that live episode, unedited, is going to be released at some point. I don't know if it'll be in a video format or audio format, most likely audio format. 
obviously it's a podcast. But uh, yeah, keep your eye out for that, Retro Fandango Live. That was a blast. Now let's move on to another segment, The Rockin' Spotlight. Now, The Rockin' Spotlight is where I show you a local band that you might not normally get a chance to listen to. So this week, I actually went down to my jam space and I talked with my buddy Justin from Dowdy Days, who I share a room with. Uh, we talked about his band, Dowdy Days. So let's go to that interview now. J-Rock here. I'm down on my jam space with my friend Justin that I share the space with. He's in the band called Dowdy Days. Hey Justin, good to see you, buddy. So you're the guitarist and singer-songwriter of Dowdy Days. Uh, how long have you been writing songs and you know, um, doing that? Well, I got into music, I think, in my, my last year of high school. I didn't know how to play guitar or anything at the time, but I just started jamming with guys and like singing the lyrics or whatever, the covers, whatever I knew in that. Covers are a good way to start. Yeah, for sure. Just try That's to... how I started playing and yeah, you and learn I the was... styles of different people. So what were your influences most of all like in your growth as a songwriter? Um, well, at the time when I, I don't know, when I was a kid I used to listen to a lot of different stuff like pop music. I was in the Michael Jackson a kid growing up. Thriller and, and stuff uh, like that. Yeah, and then, yeah. you know, I always, I always... Oh, is that the poopy dance? Poopy dance. Poopy dance. Yeah, look at those moves. Yeah, poop is funny, kids. Hey, first off, I want to start this episode with a thank you to uh, a couple cool rockin' dudes from here in Ontario, Jay Bartlett and Rob McCallum of the NES Club Nintendo Quest movie. I got my Kickstarter package here, my reward package for supporting them, supporting their film on Kickstarter. I got my signed DVD, no, not, not DVD, Blu-ray. This is the, this is actually the only Blu-ray I own, guys, seriously. The only Blu-ray I own. I don't even, like, buy movies anymore, but uh, I believe in what you're doing with this Nintendo Quest thing, and I'm not going to spoil myself yet. Came with a cool 8-bit soundtrack on tape, cassette tape, and I actually have a player that I'm going to bust out to uh, to use that with. And then I got the NES Club replica cart. This is an empty cart, and actually it didn't come with any screws. Were there supposed to be screws, guys? I don't know. But uh, just a replica cart with the label on there with Jay run along and there was a variant of the label and this is not the rare variant. <sighs> Bummer. I already had I already have this one here. Same one. And this is signed by the guys and says to J-Rock, 8-bit army. Got that 